Hey guys, and welcome back to another Design Together workshop. I'm Ahmed, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to create shared styles in Figma. But before we can jump into shared styles, we have to touch a little bit on design systems or pattern languages. So design systems or pattern languages are a set of rules which describe what you have to do in order to generate the entity which it defines. So if you follow these rules that are defined by the design system, you are able to create an entity which it defines. So from a logical point of view, the simplest kind of a language is a system which contains two sets, a set of elements or symbols and a set of rules that tell you how to combine these elements or symbols. The English language is actually one of the most complex language systems. If we take a simple sentence, for instance, like the tree is standing on the hill. In this example, the words themselves are the symbols. So the tree stand hill. And then we have rules that tell us how to combine these words to create a sentence. The simplest of these rules being grammar, which tell you that the word to be must be transformed to is in this context, and that the word the comes before the nouns to which it refers. By using our symbols and using the rules to combine these symbols together, we are able to create sentences. Ordinary languages and pattern languages are finite combinatory systems, which allow us to create an infinite variety of unique combinations appropriate to different circumstances at will. And I want you to pay attention to appropriate to different circumstances. So you can use natural language or the English language to come up with a new sentence for, let's say, a situation where you're in a birthday. And you can also use natural language to come up with a new sentence for a different situation or a different circumstance. Maybe you're at a funeral, but they still belong to the same natural language system. And this applies directly to design. Let's say you're working on a project and you're two designers. One designer is working on the home page of the product and the other designer is working on a product page. You both need to come up with appropriate designs for different circumstances, one being the home page and the other being the product page, but they both have to stem from the same system. It needs to be cohesive. So the home page needs to feel and operate like the product page so that the entire product is cohesive and works together. So if you were to compare natural languages and pattern languages, you can kind of think of words words as patterns and grammar as patterns which specify connections between other patterns. And you can think of sentences as higher patterns. So sentences are almost a collection of lower level patterns. So how does this apply to a design system? Well, let's take the same example of language and apply it to, let's say, a card component that is created by a design system. So if we were to look at this card component, this card component consists of four patterns. We have a pattern for image, we have a pattern for text, we have a pattern for spacing, and we have a pattern for color. And now in order to create this card, we first need to specify a set of rules that tell us how to combine our image, text, spacing, and color patterns in order to create this card, which is defined by this design system. So let's come up with a few hypothetical rules. We could say that we want all our images to have a 16 by nine aspect ratio, we can say that we are constricting our system to only be using a Roboto font type. And we also want to use an eight point scale. That means we can only use eight, 16, 24, 32. When it comes to things like spacing, uh, padding, margins. So like the spacing between my header and paragraph should be a multiple of eight. The spacing between my paragraph and button should be also a multiple of eight. Maybe it's 24. My margin is on the side, maybe box shadow, opacity, and you can discuss with your team what this eight point scale applies to, but you're constraining your system. We can also constrain the system to say we're only going to use this specific hex code of black and this specific hex code of blue. So that in this case, anybody who looks at these rules and looks at the system is going to come up with a very similar card to the one that you see on the screen. So keeping all this in mind, let's start creating some shared styles in Figma. So here's an example of using an eight point scale to define our spacing conventions. So for the spacing of the website that we're going to be designing throughout this course, we're going to be using eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, and 64 for our spacing. And you'll see a lot of teams actually name these spacing conventions or spacing points. 
like tiny, roomy, breathe, comfortable, and spacious. And that's because most times when you're working with design systems, the spacing properties aren't necessarily set manually. So you wouldn't go into your H1 and set the padding to 24. You would apply a roomy spacing token to your H1. And this gives you the flexibility to manage your design system. Because if you were setting all these spacing properties manually, first of all, that would increase the chances of you making an error across multiple components. And if you needed to make changes globally, it would take you a lot of time. So that's why it's beneficial to have a set of spacing properties and apply those to your components. And I'll post an example from the Carbon Design System to this video. So let's use this spacing convention to create a layout grid for desktop, mobile, and tablet. So I'm going to first add a desktop frame into my canvas. I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard. I'm gonna to go to desktop, select desktop, and I'm going to add a layout grid. I'm going to be using columns. I'm going to have 12 columns, and this is standard. I'm gonna have them center. I'm gonna set each column width to 64. I'm going to have our gutter spacing, and the gutter is the space between each column. So the space between this column and this column, this is the gutter. All these are gutters. I'm going to have that be 24 for now. And now you have a layout grid for this desktop, but we also wanna share this layout grid. So if I were to create another desktop frame, I want to be able to use the exact same layout grid. So I'm gonna go select these four dots where my layout grid is, and I'm gonna click on this create style plus. I'm gonna call this one desktop layout. And now if I were to create another frame, another desktop frame, you don't have to do all that again. You can just go to Layout Grid, add it, select the plus, and select the shared style that you created previously. And this will automatically apply it to that frame. And this is super powerful because if you wanted to change the Layout Grid for all desktop, you could just go to your shared style, edit those settings, and it will apply it across your screens or across your frames. So let's create a, another Layout Grid for Tablet. I'm gonna click F again. I'm going to select Tablet. I'm gonna go to iPad Mini. I'm gonna do the same thing, layout grid, go with columns. I'm gonna go with six for my tablet. And this is something you could decide with your team. Technically, there's always going to be 12 columns, but this kind of makes things easier to look at and work with. So I'm going to set the width. Uh, I'm gonna have, have it centered. I'm gonna set my width to 64, gutters to 24. And then I'm going to create this into a shared style for um, tablets, so I'm gonna hit tablet, layout. And I'm gonna do the same thing for mobile. I'm gonna go iPhone, A plus, sure. And I'm going to add a layout grid. I'm going to go with columns. I'm gonna have four for mobile. I'm gonna center them. I want my width to be 64. And I'm going to set my gutters to a little bit tighter in uh, mobile. I'm gonna have them 16. Because you have less space in mobile, I'm going to have my gutters be a little bit tighter. I'm gonna set that to 16. Okay, and then I'm gonna create this into a shared style. I'm gonna say mobile layout. So now we have three shared styles for layout. We have desktop layout, tablet layout, mobile layout. So if you were to create any frame, desktop, tablet, or mobile, you can just go into your shared style, select the appropriate layout grid, and it'll automatically apply it to your frame. Now you can apply the same principle to color and typography in Figma. So let's grab the header component that we created in the last video. And I'm going to paste it into my desktop frame. And you can toggle the layout grids on and off by clicking Control G. I'm going to select my header notification frame and go to where it says fill, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Click the four dots, click on the plus, and I'm gonna say, this is our primary blue color. Create style, and now we have a primary blue color. Now, some of you might be wondering, what's the benefit of this, right? So let's see what the benefit of this is. Let's copy and paste this header notification frame into our iPad frame and our mobile frame. Just bring down the size of it. Bring down the size of it. 
Now, if you didn't have a shared style, you would have to go into each of these frames and manually change the color code from, or the hex code from the properties panel. But because all these frames share a color style, all we'd have to do to change the color of all our header notifications for desktop, mobile, and tablet is just change our shared style. So if we click this filter icon here and change the color, it'll change it for all elements that have this shared style applied to it. And this is super powerful because when you're working with a lot of components, a lot of elements, you can't be going into each individual component and changing that color uh, code individually. It's gonna to take too much time and you won't be able to work efficiently. So it's very important to set up shared styles and it also helps you communicate with your design. Now you can also apply this exact same principle to text styles. So if we were to add a header to our desktop frame, and say this is a header and Let's just center it, Change, increase the size to let's say 64. And we're gonna set this to be our H1. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go to my four dots, create style. And I'm gonna say this is our H1 style. So if you were to create another, another text component, the next text element, I'm gonna say this is a header. I'm going to apply the H1 shared style. Again, if I were to change my H1 now, it'll change both these text elements. So we're gonna to go to my H1 and change this to maybe, let's say we wanna bring it down to 56. It's gonna be applied to both the text elements. And again, this speeds up your workflow dramatic. It's very important to use shared styles in general. Now the advantage of Figma here over Sketch, in Sketch you can create shared styles for text and color, but you can't do it for layout grids. The advantage of Figma over Sketch here is actually being able to share the layout grids that we created previously. So if you look at your right panel here, you have local styles applied. So you have an H1, you have a primary color, and you have your layout grids. And at any time, you can view and change these styles. So in this video, we created a shared style for our layout grids for desktop, mobile, and tablet. We created a shared style for color, and we also created a shared style for text. Make sure to check out the next video where we will be using shared styles to create a header navigation component.